Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're looking at the new Helgen GWR AEC railcar. This is my first ever Helgen model and I'm really excited to see what it's like. I'm also excited to finally own a railcar. Daypol. We've already produced a GWR railcar and I very nearly bought one, but I saw a video from Sam's Trains which had Did I Get Ripped Off in the title, which gives you a flavour of the review. And based on that review, which didn't have much to say about the Daypol model that was good, I decided to hold off and wait for the Helgen version to come out. So I'm hoping that this one is better, although it is a bit more expensive. This has a recommended retail price of £189, and I paid just over £160 from Derails, so that's a £29 discount. Whereas the Daypol version is available for around £125, so this is £35 more expensive, but hopefully it's going to be a lot better and justify the higher price. It doesn't just come in the GWR livery, Helgen have released a few versions which also include the BR Crimson and Cream and the BR Green with Speed Whiskers. Right, let's get started. And here's the model, so let's take a quick look at the packaging and then we'll get this open. So not a lot to say about it really. We've got some information on the end here which basically just tells you what model it is, that it's got lights, it's got sprung buffers, it's DCC ready with a 21 pin decoder socket, it's got NEM couplings and it's from era 3. So let's get it open. Now I've heard rumours that this packaging is incredibly tight. And it does, it is quite tight. Come on. If anyone knows a trick to getting these out of Helgen packaging, let me know in the comments. Finally, right. Let's have a quick look at the documents. So, a bit of information there. Have a read through this in detail later. We've got some history over here. We've got details on how to remove the body, so I'll need to know that because I'm going to install one of these lock sound decoders before I put it on the track. And then we've got some information about the lighting. So there's some sort of switchboard. I'm sure we'll discover that when we open it up. Right. Again, more incredibly tight packaging. There we go. So big bits of foam jammed into the top and bottom. I'm guessing that's what's giving it that And here we have the Helgen GWR AEC railcar number 22. And first impressions are, I really like it. So I will take some photos of this and we can have a look in closer detail. But first, a little bit of history. Diesel railcars were introduced by the Great Western Railway in 1933 and proved to be very successful, surviving in regular use until the 1960s. 38 were built between 1933 and 1942. The original designs featured streamlined bodywork and rounded lines, gaining them the nickname the Flying Bananas. The Helgen model of number 22 is a later design with more angular razor edge bodywork. Number 22 was built in 1940 and can accommodate 48 seated passengers in the two saloons. It's got driving cabs at either end and was powered by two AEC 9.6 litre engines. These later models were fitted with steam heating and conventional buffers and draw gear, which allowed them to haul limited train loads such as goods vans. Number 22 started life at Newport Shed, but was allocated to a number of different sheds over the years and spent her later days working around the Worcester area and on the Severn Valley line. Number 22 was withdrawn in 1962 and is one of only three GWR rail cars to be preserved. She is based at the Didcot Railway Centre and is currently the only operational rail car out of the three that have survived. But back to the model and it comes in the GWR chocolate and cream livery with the gold lining highlighting the angular bodywork. The GWR roundel is printed at both ends and on both sides and we've also got the number 22. The only other printed detail are these tiny markings on either side next to the cabs, which say 3 on top and 48 below, which I assume refers to the seating capacity. Along the body there's quite a bit of moulded detail and various separately fitted parts, including the steps, the handrails and the vents. 
At either end, we've got sprung buffers, vacuum pipes, and linkages. Note that it's very easy to get the linkages trapped in the bodywork if you're putting the body back on whilst the model is upside down. Also on the front, we've got wiper blades, and I'd like your help here. I believe this model is meant to represent the rail car as it first appeared in the 1940s, rather than how it looks now in its preserved state. If you look at photos of the preserved rail car, then the wipers are connected in a completely different way. Was this changed at some point, or have Helgen got this wrong? Let me know in the comments. On the front, you've also got the option to add NEM couplings, which come in the accessories pack. On the roof, we've got some moulded parts and this small, separately fitted roof vent, which I really like. On the bogies, again, there's quite a bit of moulded detail with sanding pipes clearly visible, and this is one area that you'll need to take extra care with when handling. Overall, the model feels pretty robust, but on the bogies, there are small parts that can come off easily, as I found out when fitting the decoder. The glazing's okay, it's not flush, but I'm guessing the glazing on the real thing was slightly set back too. Plus we've got the security bars moulded across the baggage area glazing, and each pane of glass is separately fitted inside. So the exterior is quite impressive, and Helgen have clearly gone to some trouble to make this look good, especially with the small details like the separately fitted roof vent and the absolutely tiny printed seating capacity. But I'm not sure what's happened when they've got to the interior. Maybe the budget ran out or something, but... In the compartments, it's very basic moulding in a single chocolate colour, which I'm pretty sure doesn't reflect what the real thing looked like. I've also realised that one of my compartment dividers has come away and I found it on the compartment floor. I'm not sure if the model came like this or whether I've done it whilst removing the bodywork, but just be aware that these parts are pretty fragile if you're going to take the body off. Also on the floor are some very obvious screw points for the bogies, the motor compartment and the body. How hard would it have been to cover these up or just disguise them a little bit? Also, there's no internal glazing between the compartments, which I suppose isn't a major issue, but it would have been a nice touch. In the cabs, things don't get much better. Apart from the moulding, there's no real detail to talk about. Nothing has been highlighted at all. It's more of the same chocolate coloured plastic. But the worst is yet to come. In the baggage area, we have a huge amount of electronics, and I know it has to go somewhere, but despite the moulded security bars, it's actually quite visible when you look in through the windows. So overall, the interior is pretty disappointing. Maybe they thought that a plain dark interior would be good enough for this model, and that nobody would be paying that much attention, and I could understand that, but a major selling point of this model is the lighting, which includes interior and cab lighting. And on a more positive note, the lighting's very good. The model has a number of lights at each end to allow realistic setups. And as already mentioned, the cabs and the interior also have lighting. Everything is set up to work with an ESU Lock Pilot or Lock Sound version 5 decoder, or can be selected manually using the switchboard underneath the model for use with analog control. And as with anything that's got lighting and potentially sound, we need good pickups. And on this model, every wheel has its own wiper pickup. So hopefully that should mean flicker free running on clean track. However, after having a closer look at the pickups, I'm not sure all of them were making contact with the wheels. So I might have to do some adjusting there. Each bogey is driven by a central motor, which should mean plenty of power. It's not the heaviest model in the world, but it's only likely to be moving itself, so that shouldn't really be an issue. So let's get this on a stretch of track and see how it performs. I don't have a layout properly set up at the moment, so we've only got this short section from my old layout to work with, but let's get it going. I'm loving the sound from the lock sound decoder. Listen to that brake squeal. Part of the reason the sound is so good on this is because road and rails have upgraded the speaker on it to be bass enhanced. Let's have another run. That acceleration is really smooth. Let's get the lights off in the room so we can see the lights on the model better. We've got the cab lights, we've got the headlights and we've got the interior lighting as well. 
Look how slow and smooth this runs and I've had absolutely no pickup issues. A really nice touch is that when it stops moving the cab lights come on automatically and when it pulls away you can hear the cab door closing. This is just really fun to drive. So what do we think about the Helgen AEC rail car? I really like it, especially combined with the lock sound decoder, which really brings it to life. The external detail is good, it runs smoothly, and the lighting is very impressive. The only real letdown is the interior, which compared to the rest of the model just feels a bit neglected. And the interior lighting just highlights the problem even more. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free and I really appreciate it. And don't forget to hit that notifications button so YouTube will let you know when videos come out in future. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.